The car goes through several stages of manufacture. We use a CNC milling machine, which drills out the car from what used to be balsa wood and now it's styrofoam blocks. From that, you have your separate parts that can be manufactured. You have the axles, you have the wheels, you have the front and back wing. We get a lot of choice for the aerofoils and the wheels. The materials we use at the end of the day, we have to look at uh, how they're going to perform on the car. If you're using some kind of plastic, if you used a different type, would it be lighter, would it be heavier? Look at the aerodynamics of that certain material. You look at what kind of finishing you can get on it. But you'll also need to look at the strength and how it will bond with other materials so that when they fire down the track they won't break. We designed our car to basically survive every structure test, impact test that we put it through. When you're looking at things like the back wing and the front wing, you want those to be durable enough not to break on impact with the deceleration system. Or you'll want a deceleration system that's very gentle. We didn't want to be by the side of the track on race day having to change front wings, change wheels, because we didn't want them to break. Also you can get materials that are easy to manufacture with, such as 3D printed materials, then you can produce lots of the parts, and then if you make the parts so they're easily replaceable on the car, even if they do break, it's not really a problem, you can just replace it. To make our wheels, we decided that using SLS nylon was a viable, not too expensive, but still effective material. It would ensure that the car would be aerodynamic, and would also be lightweight, so it could go down the track at a fast speed. As far as paint finishes, you're looking for low friction paint, uh, low drag paint, and also what gives the best finish on the car, and also sticks with your team colours and that brand identity. A number of the teams have been using polish that is used on aircraft to fill in the microscopic pores to make sure that the fluid will flow as you want it over the car. Every class in Formula One schools has a weight limit now. However much your body weighs, you've got to make up that extra weight in the other components of the car, including the wheels, the front and rear wings. Overall, the car wants to be as light as possible, so selecting materials that will keep that under is paramount. We used on our wheels a material that had a really low friction coefficient, so then it would effectively slide along the track with no friction, so it would obviously go faster. But also one thing that uh, we've learned is how important the likes of uh, weight in the wheels is. So things like the lighter weight wheel you have, the faster the car will actually go down the track. Once you have the car, you then choose your final wings. The wheels are then connected to the axles, with or without bearings, depending on what the team wants. Some even choose suspension. It's such a great relief when you do get the final car in your hands. For all those designs, you see the rough sketches on pieces of paper. Um, you see the CAD files and then you see it ready to race down the track and it is amazing. You really are hoping that all your work has paid off and it will shoot down that track at fast speed.